All right, hey, how's it going, Mike? It's going great, going great. So here we are in uh, Pot Valley Sandwich Shop uh, here in Ann Arbor, right near campus. And uh, we've got something interesting on the table that we yeah. want to talk about for so the mirrorless minutes viewers. Definitely. It's an awesome place to street shoot, so that might give you a hint. Yeah, definitely <laughs> this whole, this is going to be interspersed in, I think, in place of an episode or in conjunction with one. Right. So this will be a street shooting episode. Uh, Mike's forte for sure, right? And that uh, that has been uh, it's just an exciting an exciting opportunity to to get uh, to get this camera and to be able to work with it over the last couple of months. Uh, I, I, it's it's hard to explain because there's so many great things about it. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It really is uh, an, an opportunity that I'll remember forever because uh, it is so different than the OMD models. Um, the The technology is there. But more importantly, it's the feel of a street shooting camera. And that's so wait, wait, it. so hold on. You, you skipped ahead here. I, think, I know I did. I think uh, some people <laughs> might have missed something. You, yeah. You're referring to a, a new camera. It's, it sounds like it. I am. Aren't I? <laughs> and right here. That's it. Right There's there. a new camera. Um, <laughs> you may have noticed I'm gonna that. move the mic up a little bit because okay. I'm probably talking quiet. But um, So Mike has been shooting with a brand new camera. Mike's going to tell you a little bit more about it. But... It's going to be hard for you to tell from that vantage point. So I'll move the camera a little bit closer to the camera. <laughs> so you can tell me if you see any distinct differences in this camera versus the other Olympus cameras. <laughs> and uh, I will let Mike yep. tell you what this is. Well, and let's start by going right off the bat. And it is a pen, a pen F. And if anyone remembers, and if you're old enough to remember, uh, the Pen F came out in 1963. Um, they sold millions of them, and it's just an amazing uh, camera, amazing style film camera when it came out, obviously. And they've gone back, and they're and they're going into the Pen line and making a street shooting camera. And just just from the the beginning, you should see right off the bat, looking at the back from an OMD model to where look where that eye view you know where your eye view is at your eye view is no more longer centered it is now off to the left and as a street shooter when you're i'm going to take a picture here jamie you can keep both eyes open you can watch for the uh you know the street traffic coming both ways you keep your eye on the on the ball and move and and uh yes it does it does have a screen <laughs> it isn't it isn't just a, a film camera hey there he is that looks pretty good that's a good shot of I'll show you there. <laughs> so, yeah, that is just the that's just the, the tip of it, though, um, because the, probably the big thing that everybody's going to uh, get onto right away is it's a new sensor. Yeah. And when you're when you're talking new sensors, everybody's oh, well, I just got to change this sensor, change a better sensor, and, and this is a 20 megapixel sensor. And now that now with that introduction of that, I can tell you the night shooting. The quality, the depth of the images that are coming out, um, there's a difference. There's oh, yeah. a difference, and, and it is a really special difference. Um, and and we've, had, I haven't even been able to look at a raw file yet. Yeah. So yes. I'm talking about JPEGs. Yep, so. The ability to adjust and look at JPEGs is amazing. So Mike yeah. said that he's only looking at the JPEGs because you know how it is. Uh, right. When the new camera comes out, there's not necessarily raw support available. Um, Mike has this camera. So remember, this is prototype. Right. You know, That's it says exactly. sample right there. This is right. early in the game here, but keep in mind, you know, we're doing this in November. We're recording this. Right. Uh, chances are you won't even be seeing this video until sometime in January or February. So um, keep in mind, some things could change. But I have a pretty strong feeling. I'm sure Mike does too. That this is probably what the end product is going to look like. Yeah. Um, you don't get this far in the design phase. Right. to just change everything at the last minute. So button placement, I think you can expect all that. And speaking of button placement, mm -hmm. we're going non-scripted off the cuff yeah. here. I just noticed <laughs> something that it's the little things that get me excited. I tell people what, that all the what time. What is that? What did you notice? I noticed that there is a <laughs> screw mount on your shutter, so you can actually screw in a shutter release button because everybody knows I'm a big fan of that. You can screw in a cable release Cable well. release right onto the with, – without any power. <laughs> yes. So think Actually, about there is power. It's the thumb power. The thumb power. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, in power. keeping with the uh, mm -hmm. the retro field, the street shooting range finder type yeah. camera setup, they even threaded the shutter release so you can put in. Yeah, and that is, that is really It's the little sharp. touches. Now, let's, uh, in fact, let's stay on the top. 
we'll we'll stay on the top and, and go across it. Um, your your on off switch is just a, a single toggle, very very strong, real, actually real strong and solid. So I mean, no accidental quick. turn There's, on and turn off. You can't bump and... this thing that way or not. And um, I'm telling you, I've shot. Um, just to give you an idea. Of course, we, we get a nice air conditioner to come on or right, something, yeah. or the heater. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, we try to talk. Um, but uh, I've shot in uh, New York, San Francisco, Chicago, Detroit, um, street shooting. So let me tell you, it it's taken a beating. It's you know been hit on subway doors and that, which is great. It just keeps going, and this is not going to turn off. Still have a hot shoe, uh, you know, there. Um, not much use that I'm using for it right now, but certainly you could use that. Um, viewfinder, unbelievable over here on the left side. Again, I know I'll say it because I just keep talking about that. You've got your selector dial. Uh, this is similar to uh, an OMD, but at the same time, we've got like a C4 and C3, and that's actually the scene mode. And um, what is the other mode that we're always uh, that's like in the, the back? Art filters? It's, it's not an art no, filter. Got... Yeah, art filters on the front, but. But yeah, it's another scene mode, but you can adjust those. C1 to C4, so it's basically okay. you can have some my sets yep. in, into those. So there are a lot more modes on the mode dial. A lot and more it's modes. got the, uh, the locking mode dial yeah. mechanism. And definitely definitely can lock her down yep. and make sure that's good. And then, of course, you got video. Um, video, I, I won't comment. I'm not a big, big video person. As you can tell, we're doing this video in a pot belly. Right. Uh, <laughs> and with music behind us, so we're... <laughs> But, uh, you know, it does have video on it, and obviously with 20 megapixels, I'm sure you get a better video. Uh, That's and exciting then, to see this right is a there. Little, this is a little different, and, and this, this comes straight out of, um, I'm not going to go into competitors' cameras or anything like that, but this is, this is very much like an older style film camera. It's, you adjust your exposure compensation with a nice spin wheel. That so, looks firm, too. Yeah, and that's, as you're, that's exactly it. So you're genius. not going to accidentally, I have a problem with, the OMD cameras, I know yeah, I'm constantly bumping, bumping it and changing my exposure yeah. compensation. This is this is real firm and it's solid oh. click. Nice. And and you can uh, I'm probably not gonna be able to see. Let's see if I can get it up here a little bit, but you can see real quickly where it's how quickly and it and it uh, it takes it takes some effort to make sure you're getting into the right spot. So once you get set down, you're gonna be good. But having that wheel right there is is fantastic because. You can tell the protrusion here for your thumb. It's got a good, solid fill to it, and I, I know that's what you said first when when you picked up. You went, "Whoa, yep. <laughs> this is solid. This is a solid piece of machinery." And then you'll start to notice some of the other differences. Your your front spinning dial stays the same, you know, to adjust your aperture and your your speed. You know, I almost said film speed, but <laughs> your your speed here. Uh, you know, as far as your shutter speed. But then there's something a little different here with, I guess we'll call that a squiggly line. Yep. Would you call that? <laughs> okay. But we're in special modes, and we're going to go, let's come back to that dial. Sure. We'll come back to we'll that We'll come back dial. to that. Yeah. Um, function one here off the button, um, fantastic to have. I always like to use this to do my centering for my uh, shots, for my focus. So I always bring it back to the center. So but right next course, to your thumb grip. Is Boom. function one easy to get to, no problem. Yeah, your there. number one function, at least for me, is is that to go there. Yep. Uh, function twos are here, and then and then uh, pretty much similar in this case on the back here. I like the yeah. uh, dedicated magnify button. Right. Because now I don't have to lose a function button to magnify, which I always set one. To always. Magnify. Yep. And you're right. And there you are, right there. You know, we can bring it in, and well, see, I'm, we're not we're not doing a macro film today but yeah. <laughs> but we can off the uh, nine millimeter fish shot there you go <laughs> so we'll, we'll take that back and that, that is really nice to have uh as well to check in and see if you what you've captured even after uh let's see then we've got a fully articulating screen again we'll say this is a sample camera yep. i just took a <laughs> shot um and fully articulating screen so that that works well and and one thing's nice because, of course, it has silent shutter, like everything usually does now. Um, I'll tell you, on subways, this is closed. I don't even leave this open, so nobody can nobody say, see that you're see shooting, shooting yeah. or whatever. I I'll size up what I want, and you know, if, if street shooters are watching this, they know exactly how 
they fill with the 17 on or the 12 or the 25. Yeah. So you just know where to so point So you know the where you're going to be on your body. You know, I usually got certain resting spots on my chest. Sometimes it ha- helps with the weight. You know, that's a good, good spot <laughs> in my knee, and, you know, if I'm shooting from the side. But uh, so I'll leave that closed, and then you've got silent shutter, and it's uh It's, it's cool. You know, the, the back of it when you close it is yeah. textured to match the grip texture on the front of it as well it gives it, it like a really cool yeah you know and, film camera exactly look. and it and it's got a good uh feel to it as well it's not a just a slippery plastic yeah you know, it feels almost like the leather in the protrusion here which is sharp I mean, those are the kind of details i think that they've gone ahead and really yeah mastered and then and then i'll i'll tell you here some other details and i know we don't have zooming in on here but well just, here so yeah. Let's let's do that. Let's zoom in for a minute. Okay, yeah, let's so, go in. So we'll cut out for just a second, Sounds and, like and a we'll good zoom idea. back in and get some good tight shots. All right, all right. So here we are back, and now you should be just probably viewing our hands, correct? Yeah, just your hands, Just not my mine. hands, okay. <laughs> all right, so let's talk a little bit. We've covered a little bit of the top, but I wanted to go over to the sides and, and really talk about the, just the level of making it look like a, an old SLR, you know, a film camera where you've got just smooth sides not a lot of you know uh, screws or or anything like that then you come across the bottom and this is this part that will probably you know i look at and i go what happened here right from <laughs> an engineering are, standpoint right. it's like how does that even right. happen? where how are can the you screws and how does that hold on to but look at that that looks just like an old film camera in fact when i first picked it up i thought where's the little button that the, you hit to the release to right. get the film exactly. canister out um, so that's how awesome that is. So just that whole feel is it's it's a really just a cool retro feel. Yeah, and, and it really makes you feel like street shooting. I'm getting that from this camera. Yeah. The, the attention to detail on it is definitely you know and a then level the, we haven't seen on yet. the um, OMDs or, or a lot of cameras they'll have this will usually be like a rubber pullout. Yeah, you know, and this has got a nice plastic. It's a door. It's a door. Nice, you know, for your HDMI and your and your USB AV out. Oh, very which, cool. Which of course someday I'm sure like our great OMDs, but probably be some cool firmware. Oh, I'm sure that they're going to add on to yeah. this camera, <laughs> which is the greatest thing. And now I'm going to turn slowly. We won't necessarily put it in slow motion, but I want to have everybody check that out. And you know what? Let's take let's take that off so that you can really see and see what do you see different on here. And that is, I'm going to point it out if you haven't already picked it up, is what the heck is this button here? You know, how could that, what is that thing doing? Now this is, this is really the key here. I'm just going to hold it properly to the camera. These are your color selectors or profile controls so you've got mono profile controls color profile controls of course and then no profile controls whatsoever if you're shooting and then you've got your art filters that everyone would be used to so good distinction right there the the fact that these are not art filters necessarily these are completely new to the olympus cameras exactly completely new so here's your normal art filters that you're used to and then your your color creator Yep. Is, is the one where you pull out the certain color out of a black and white image, and that's the fourth click over. But why don't we... Let, yeah, let's go back to those first two, those yeah, new let's, ones. Let's go back and actually talk about mono. Um, now, when you're in the mono uh, color profile control, the things that you can do, this is where the key to the camera comes in. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that and because this is where it makes it feel like a film camera. And so we're probably pretty good here, right? Yeah. From uh, getting on the yep. screen. Okay, so now we are in, you have three. Uh, Jamie's checking to make sure we're looking good. All right. Look pretty good. That's awesome, Mike. All right. Here's what we have. We, we have three choices in the mono profile color. Uh, I got to say it right. The mono profile control. And then three... Uh, choice is also in the color profile control right now we're in mono and i'll show you where that is on the super control panel here right up in the top and you can you know spin your dial to mono three mono two and mono one and let's talk about mono one first sure we'll go into mono one first this is you this is your your choice and selection of what you'd like to do so now we're in mono one i'm in a certain preset that i've actually created I've gone ahead and um, I can't rename them in the camera, 
but I, I do have notes. I use notes on my uh, iPhone, and inside my notes, I've, I've kept some names. I uh, actually named them to uh, real famous uh, New York street photographers. I call them certain um, their profiles because you build them. And now we're going to come back to that squiggly line. Okay. Let, let's talk about the squiggly line on the back. So you've set it to one. It's in your profile. Now, how do you, what do you do? Normally, you might go from an OMD. You might be used to going into here and using this. Now they've got this really different line, this toggle switch, I'll call it, because it does flip back. And you can see I just toggled over. So you toggled it once, and now you've toggled got it once, the and I'm filter. in my filters, my color filters, and not only am I in my color filters for for mono, but I can adjust that color filter for the strength of the color filter, like that, and then also where I want to go with it, orange, red. If you can't really read it, red. You know, there's magenta and blue and cyan, green, yellow and then none, and then back to yellow where I was before. And then the, of course, the levels. One more toggle will show you, you also get to control your vignetting. And this isn't um, vignetting, gosh, I love that heater. Uh, <laughs> this isn't uh, vignetting that uh, is electronic vignetting. This isn't vignetting that's much more uh, sharp as to what a film vignetting might do. So it has a real analog feel to it. It really does, and, and you can and you can. I don't know how much you can be able to see on the camera. It's from subtle. Here. It's not. Yeah, uh, it doesn't over the top. Like five might be a lot stronger, obviously, and five down to this side is going to be stronger. Yeah. But it's not like an over digital vignette. So what we're seeing then um, is there's a lot of like granular control. It's right. not like you've got vignette or no vignette. You got you've it. got varying degrees of vignette. And then with your color filter, it's the same thing. You don't have just red, green, blue, yellow, orange. You've got, you've got shades cyan, of that in between. Right. And then you've got the amount of strength that you apply that filter as well. Exactly. So you're really, you're making um, like film emulsions. The best way to think about it is you're making film, film emulsions like other you know, brands do. And you can pick out how film used to fill to you. If you didn't shoot film, then it's even better because... I'll tell you, I know Jamie says he's, he wasn't a film shooter when he grew up or whatever, but Jamie comes up with the coolest presets that are different from mine, and that's what's pretty cool. So you don't uh, just get this camera because you shot film in the past. You do it because it's something there where you can create, and like Jamie says, very granular type presets. Um, after shooting now, it's been, uh, it's been 40 days that I've shot with this camera. By the time we show this, obviously, it'll be a lot longer than that. But um, I'm gonna tell you, I post processing. It's not you're, you're doing it in the camera. Yeah. So yeah, you're worried about yeah. your composition. It's like Lightroom or yeah. Photoshop in the I camera. Mean, you now are really point. trying to uh, to make that happen in that sense. Now let's hit that uh, toggle switch one more time in the mono profile, and this is something that's really sharp. And that's because now you can adjust the curves or the highlights and the shadows. Nice. And, and in there, so we'll just do it from the spin wheel so I don't mess up and cover everything. Um, you, as you can see, you just spin up and down. You can go through your highlights there. And, and then you can, on the back dials, you can, of course, you can get your shadows down, decreasing. And, and you'll see it move just a little bit. It keeps going all the way down to minus 7. So it's got a real consistent fill. Again, you know, quickly set it. That's your preset. And then I've taken pictures of my screens, and like I said, I've called them, you know, like I got Boogie, I got Mermelstein, I've got all these great uh, New York street photographers. Very cool. That are, that are I want to remember some of these, and yeah, someday I, I've already, uh, I've already explained, I think, in, in, uh, in depth to the people that made the camera and the engineers that we've got to get a way to rename these, you yeah. know, because now you're going to get so excited, I want to keep five in there. Yeah. Uh, so... So that's, I'm sure I could, we'll see that someday for sure. Um, and then if you hit that toggle switch one more time, you'll come back to your, your, uh, your filter there. Very you know. cool. So, so now that, that's profile one. So if we go in back into super control panel and let's go over to profile two. Profile two comes set from the factory. Um, still have this adjustment. And yes, you still can adjust it if you wanted to. You, yep. You could. Um, so you could kind of use the factory presets right. as a starting point if you're not comfortable in building your own. Right, right. And the as far as the the um, 
preset two. It's a classic film look, like monochrome film. So you, you won't see any vignetting there. And if you come across the highlights in the shadows are plus and minus six, uh, respectively. And, and then no color filter. So it's that. just a, a straight, it's pretty monochrome. straight monochrome film that you would have pulled out. Now, granted, you can adjust that. And, and uh, I got worried at first when I was first shooting with the camera because I went ahead and, and did this and I adjusted the darn vignetting. I went, oh, shoot, I don't want to do that because yeah. I'm supposed to shoot this <laughs> with the way it came so, from the so factory. So you can reset that back to default. And how yep, do you do and that? And if you come right down here, you hit the reset back default, you just hold it. Hold and okay down and everything's hold. back for that profile. Cool. So you back. don't have to worry about destroying right. the preset. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. So now let's go back. Let's get out of that and go into our profile again. And now we're going to go over to profile three. And you're going to, you're going to see a, a difference on the back of the screen here, I'm sure, pretty quickly. Much lighter, oh, yeah. much more vibrant, um, darker. The darks really get down and dark. And the profile three is like an infrared film not don't confuse it with infrared from a digital camera yeah. that you've had not the, the sensor same as putting a out. filter on or, right. right yeah this but, is not like that this is like infrared film if you ever shot infrared film the skies will get real dark yeah um foliage gets lighter right blue skies are black very and, cool and it's you know what's really cool is is doing this on those um real cloudy heavy cloudy days just before it rains oh, i've yeah. shot with this this it this takes this is not as um over the top, maybe sometimes as a our dramatic right. filter, but again, it's not supposed to be. These are different than your, you know, your art filters. So this one's going to have a much different feel. And it, one more time, I'll go through it. You pull that toggle switch. You can adjust your vignette. Here's here's where your highlights and shadows they have zeroed out on your curve line. Yep. Again, because this is that infrared film. And so, and they've got it down as you see in the, the red, red filter. Yep. In the red filter, which makes your blue skies black. You got it. Awesome. Okay, so so now that's those are our three in the in the mono settings. So that's you've covered three just in monotone. Right. Just we haven't a, even touched. We haven't color even talked yet. color yet. And I know <laughs> we didn't want to make this you know a four hour video, but we have a feeling that there might be a few people when you hear about this camera, they might want to see this video. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. So I think we're. I think I think we're doing a thing. Let's let's go back to the front of the camera, and I want to show you because I think, um, like we've talked about already, and you you said, is the buttons are um, not difficult. They're strong. They're yeah. well made buttons. Same exact thing here on the profile, on this profile control button. It's not going to be bumped yeah, or moved. No, no accidental so you changes. Really, you really feel a. I know you won't be able to hear it, but there's a click. There's an have, audible you might click. Have heard yeah. an That's audible awesome. click. So you've actually heard. A, a color uh, click there, so let's let's flip around and hello color. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. Now now we're now we're into our color. Let's see which one. I don't remember which one we left it on. So oh, we left it on one. Okay, so this was my creation of a color filter. I don't remember the name on this one, but I know I was trying to make it more of a a doll type filter. How are we doing on film? Our film time. Yeah, we okay. Still in focus? <laughs> yeah. It's not like Google Plus or Mirror. This is a, this is your first live in person mirrorless minute show, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so we're we're both trying on this one. Um, okay, so this is the one I've created. Now let's go back. Remember to create your color filters or like your monos. You're going to go to that toggle switch, and from that toggle switch, now, um, you know what? I'm going to go. Uh, I am going to go to show to show you the toggle switch. I'm going to go to two because I can reset it. I don't want to lose my setting on my own creation, <laughs> so it's my my Frankenstein setting here. So I'm going to flip over to color profile two. Let's talk about two first. Two is a uh, like a Kodachrome 64 film. Okay, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's like shooting old Kodachrome film, and it's got that awesome look to it. You know where it's got a real uh, rich color, a deep, deep. You can see from the table, a deep, the deep reds, uh, or the, the brick back here. You know, you can see where that that comes in. I'm trying to get too far out of focus there. Hope I mess that up. But um, okay, so I want to show you though what what to do with how that comes. That is what 
that is the setting from the factory, from Olympus, where you can go through the color selectors and you've got you know your greens, your reds, all the way through purples, blues, cyans, greens, back around to all. You can adjust all of them at the same time. But what I'm going to show you is how you can make these. Whoops, we'll turn it there. And you can see how you can pull them out. Pull them out to the edges, and you really can go. So you can really accentuate each right. individual exactly uh, hue. And here I am. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly right, Jamie. These are these are all the the hues, and we're uh, let's see. No, you can almost make one look like uh, SpongeBob SquarePants if you <laughs> try. But you can see here, I'm going for the uh, the mushroom, mushroom look. Mushroom and the, the mushroom look right we'll now. Pac-Man here, right? In a um, so, you know, I mean, maybe we should come up with naming them like that, you know. Uh, so, again, we're going back to, you know, the granular control, I mean, to an insane amount when it comes to color because now you're able to select cyan and yellow oh, individually and adjust one in and one out. Yeah, and you can tell. So, and I did that. So, that's how you can adjust your color. I'm doing this in two so I can reset it. You see, when you hold this camera in your hand, you'll understand probably better. But it's a lot easier than going in and adjusting yeah, one. Yeah, Mike that you doesn't created. want to alter one of his presets. <laughs> you know, so, so he will alter the factory preset, and then, and then he just hits it. OK to reset it back to normal. Right. So the other thing in in the uh, color profile is you've also got your highlights and controls, the same as you did, the same as you did in the other ones. And as you see, we can drop down our shadows. You so know, he can give it a real highlights. contrasty, poppy look, right. real easy. And you can pull and focus on, the, on that lens. The table has definitely changed in color. I know we only have one piece of color in here, really. Um, but uh, it definitely it has changed the color. Uh, and, and, and then, like you said, the contrasty nature of it as well. So let's, let's go in and show just what Jamie was saying, because now we want to go back to profile two. We'll just hold down the OK button, boom, everything is back. Everything is back, you know, to, to where you got to come back to here to actually reset that one. So too. hold it down. Hold it down. And there it goes. And there it goes. Back to normal. And, that, and that's very cool. See. So uh, I won't go through one because one we just did. That's yep. what one would look like if you wanted to do it. But let's go one more uh, on our color profile and go over to three because that's an interesting color as well. With uh, Chrome, really with the um, Profile 3, it's like real vivid saturation. If, if you did shoot film, think of Ektachrome 100, uh, like Velvia, um, you know, different emulsions that are real rich. Yeah, rich and vivid at this point. I mean, you're getting, you're getting real vivid in color. Let's see if I can move this here. There you go. Maybe that'll help. Get the little pot belly oh, yeah. up there, you know. And you can see the different colors popping out of popping out of that one. And let's go in and look at it real quick while we're there. Um, oops. And we'll hit our toggle switch. Hit our toggle switch right there. And you can see how that one is out all to all the edges. To the edges. So it's, okay, it's the really max different. on all your colors. So it's making everything as rich as it possibly can exactly. be in all the colors. And then a real strong S. Highlights channels. Well, yeah. plus minus four seven okay. as the motion goes. So yeah, it's got a, it's got it really does have that. And you know, again, that could all be reset if you didn't want to adjust one of those. You could, but I've left those the same. And the samples, and maybe, and we'll go through a couple of quick samples, show you what I've shot, and uh, Jamie will put them on. Maybe we'll show them first on the iPad, yep. and then try to put them in to the show. Um, so that is those. And we'll go back again. These selectors, you know, your profile selectors, color, mono, and three options in each, one personal in each, and then two factory set. Awesome. And you just you just got yourself a camera times ten for street shooting. All right. I think we're going to cut into some close-ups of the camera. We'll talk a little bit more about it here. Okay. Back in front of some some shots that I've done here. Sweet. Um, working uh, with the camera over, uh, you know, like I say, about 35, 40 days. Um, and, you know, by the time this comes out, it'll be a lot a lot more than that. So um, mm -hmm. before you go into yeah. the photos, let's talk just really quick a little yeah. bit. Um, so you've had the camera for a while. Right. Um, 
you're tasked with a specific mm-hmm. job, and that's one of the things to showcase on this camera right. is what we've just spent a lot of time talking about, mm-hmm. which is the uh, the color profile controls. Right. And so what you're going to show now are all photos that showcase those those controls. Those, those controls. So mm-hmm. what we're going to see is... Um, Basically, all these are straight out of the camera JPEGs, oh, no yeah. raw editing, nothing like that. Mm-hmm. And these are all going to be shown. We're going to show um, ones that were done with the built-in profiles, right. and then we'll probably throw in a couple towards the end, maybe of ones that were with your custom ones. Yeah, if we have yeah, time. we'll we'll throw uh, absolutely because um, there's some that when you have a certain um, when the uh, outside area or the area you're shooting inside, whatever poses a certain type of light, I think. I've found that uh, the profiles can some can work better than others. Sure, it's like the art filters. Yeah, you, you exactly. tend to find a scene that works best for them. Right, right, and that's really what I've done. So well, let's talk about some of the ones. That, let's go into this one here from San Francisco with the Trans America building. And um, you know, you, here you're going to see you you may be seeing it on the screen now, but I know yep. that we'll be able to throw this in front. Yeah, we'll show better. this full screen here in about so, two seconds. Right. <laughs> so when you're looking at this is this is the Mono Profile Two. So this is that, you know, I'm looking here, is, this is like a monochrome film. And the monochrome film shot, you can just see the deep blacks and the... Now, when you say that, this is this, this is the infrared one you were talking about, um, right? No, actually, this one, this one actually is uh, not. This is a two. I've got, I've got another one that, that's infrared. Um, you know what? This might be three. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. see, we're gonna guys. We gotta we gotta go through this. I don't have all my notes from my uh, actual Lightroom catalog in here. But this one's got to be because of the skies. The black sky. Yeah. yeah. So so here's if we're in three, and you'll you'll see you'll pick up some detail at the bottom of the screen of the person walking back here. But really, you can see what it does to the sky, and and how that looks. Just an awesome shot. You know, coming up across an old fire escape and and you know using that as a frame. And so that one's a real sharp one on, on three. And let's let's go. I'm gonna come back in and out of here again. This probably isn't necessarily your scene, but um, let's go through and pull off if we can another one that I know is. Here's the two. This is the two right here. This is profile two in the monochrome. Okay. All right. So profile and, two is kind of built to emulate what? You said there's a specific film that it's It's emulating? a monochrome film. Okay. It's a basic monochrome film that, again, I didn't put any vignettes on this one at all. Um, you can put vignettes and adjust that, but, but this one's just got shot in Chinatown in San Francisco, and um, so I think that... You can see what it does. It will blow out some of the whites on the ends, but it has a person walking through, and obviously we've got some Chinese writing to yep. to show what's what's happening and where I'm at to give some sense of where I'm at and shooting with the 17 millimeter. And I think we need to say too is everything I did on this project, uh, 100% primes. Yeah. Not not a single pro lens. Um, I could put pro lens on it if I want to, but kind really of gets away from the street gets away shooting from the whole aspect street shooting sure. aspect. Uh, you know, you focus with your feet when you're street shooting. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but but I will tell you, you know, we've uh, I besides even the primes, I've used not only the 15 millimeter but the nine millimeter body cap lenses. Yep. So you were throwing yeah. body cap yeah, lenses. Yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. You've I've had body cap lenses on, and and th- that's been great. Um, you know, especially the. The, the fisheye one because it, that really offers a whole different world. When you and I were in together in uh, New York, we were walking through the streets. I can get within, gosh, I don't even know, probably two feet. And right. Still, still, can, still get somebody. Still get somebody's feet and head in the yeah. shot and really without them knowing you're you're on top of them it's you get some funky shots uh, we won't show all those because we don't want to go into our rated shots from right. new york <laughs> <laughs> but you can get some wild shots with the, with that um so let's let's go back and see if we can look at another one we showed you three we've showed you two um i can pull up a shot that i know is one is something that i made uh, from chicago and i've just got to find it here as i'm talking away I remember everybody. Mike's had the camera for yep. a while. He shot hundreds oh, and hundreds of photos. I have. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. This one I had on very light. I, the light was coming through the buildings in Wicker Park. Absolutely one of my favorite areas to shoot in Chicago. Just uh, it's so cool and trendy. Um, awesome place to shoot. But there's great wall murals as you can see Bob Marley, Martin Luther King, 
and uh, you know I'll, I'll say right off the bat this this isn't uh, you know our uh, person this is our my daughter <laughs> walking <laughs> past that shop but that, those light beams coming down through and this is one that I set up and it's a special profile that I had put together to make it a real light situation and with that those beams it's just an awesome look coming through so so yeah that's so there's your three actually for monotone um, as you can see you're I'm going through let's go into color ones there's a couple of color ones that I yeah I was really wanting to see that one come really <laughs> like here this this one is 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 the color three the profile three and then and you can tell right off the bat it's real it's is in a again in Wicker Park in Chicago in a, in a store that uh, is a resale store um, saw these great looking shoes and people coming down the stairs to into this basement area and I said hey this is a cool shot for that camera um, so vivid saturation like an ectochrome uh, 60 or ectochrome 100 film a real real deep film emulsion piece and you can see where it does it how it pulls out the colors here and these were I don't know some some type of skirts or something hanging up there yeah <laughs> I can't remember um, but I can tell you that this is just a, a cool shot from coming from coming down in there so that is three so Colors, again, straight out of camera. Straight out of Mike camera. Mike isn't doing anything with these. Yeah. It's just... um, yeah, it's real easy. And I will tell you, that one of the things I had told Jamie, I said, it's so sharp to go through these and not have uh, to go in Lightroom and make any kind of adjustments. When you're street shooting, and most of my street shooting stuff, I probably don't adjust a lot. But now, if I want to adjust it, I adjust it in the street and I'm still shooting. I'm yeah. not coming back going, oh, I wonder what this will look like. And you know you're shooting raw and JPEG, and, and when we get the raw converter, we'll we'll be able to yep. to obviously get through that. Um, but another this one here is the uh, set for number two. So this is like an uh, this one is like a Kodachrome 64 shot, an old film Kodachrome. You, and it's probably hard to tell, but on this when you get out of the uh, when you get it up on the screen, you'll be able to tell the leaves down on the bottom and how the yellows and blues contrast each other. And it pulls out some of the red, I think, and yeah, in her shirt there that was coming through, but walking through, and it's it's just a real probably the best way. It's real rich. The other one's more vivid. The one I just showed you before, this one's yeah. very rich uh, shot. So that that is our number two. And again, I have to go through and find. Uh, actually, I think I put so. This one right here, I do believe, and my daughter's going to love this. <laughs> I'm going to have to show it though, because of the stairs. This one is this one is one that I set up. This is one of my one profiles that I set up. And again, I did this purposely because I wanted, I don't want to make her look different, right? You know, I want I wanted to bring out something in the colors and all these different colors. And, and the it's funny that you mentioned that because that's what I was going to yeah. point out is. This is like a perfect portrait right. shot, right? But you still have rich colors without her skin tone being crazy. You and know what I mean? That's and, a hard line to, to, and it to is. balance on, and, and that's that is what's cool about the camera. I mean, here this shows just a great. I mean, the range of this camera. You know, here I mean we've got a good skin tone all the way across the the uh, the picture, and you can pick out all the different pinks, blues, greens, yellows, reds. So that goes to where Mike was showing earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get that that color wheel on here, right. Mike could go through, have his daughter standing there. Mm -hmm. She's on the screen, and he can start grabbing the blue mm -hmm. and the green and the yellow and start pulling uh, those out and watching her face, and her face isn't going to change. Right. Once he sees her face, skin tone start to change, then he knows he can back off on that. Yep. So... Yeah, yeah, very cool that you could build that in the camera. Yeah, and so and that's that's one of the things that I think people will appreciate. That might even if you're uh, you know um, like our buddy there uh, Levi, that yeah, loves, they loves like the to do street, street portraits. portraits. Exactly, this would be something where he's going out. You know, just leave all that flash crap at home. Yep, <laughs> you don't need any of that. You need the camera, and you're and you're ready to roll out in the streets, and you can make some real vivid when you get into these areas. Uh, um, you know, this this area in Chicago. This this wasn't. Uh, in Wicker Park, we had left is another stop. It's like a Mexican town area, and um, when you get that, set your camera, get ready to roll. And then you, again, if you like, if you don't like that, you got option two, you got option three. Right. And if you don't like that, go back to just the regular color in the camera. Exactly. You know? So as yep. simple as that. Um, so that that's that's three three of your options on color, and um, 
and uh, you know, Jamie and I, uh, let, let's talk about uh, our filters because sure. I know we're crazy we're about our filters. They did not take them away. Um, but uh, you will notice some uh, subtle differences. Maybe it's the 20 megapixels. I don't know. But I've got some, uh, some ones that are shot, you know, with some art filters. Uh, and, but I go into my art filters, and I know Jamie does constantly, is that I adjust those. You know, we go into those sub-menus. If you watch the show, you see Jamie giving the tips and stuff. So that, that is something. But this is one from Detroit. Um, no, these people aren't walking around Detroit spy for spy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a U- Yukamon. I think it was called Yukamon Festival that I shot down in Detroit. The craziest people walking through. But here's, here's another one with the dramatic art dramatic art filter very cool. uh, you know just cool following these people in the in the show there she is oh, wow. the yeah. front with the joe lewis fist in the in the background um uh plastic chains so don't get worried yeah. this this lady wasn't out you know terrorizing detroit if you haven't been to detroit no she's not walking around yeah. detroit <laughs> like that this is one of those times where it was a big festival um and let's see if i can pull out one one other really cool one if i can uh, what well, we're talking about it from dramatic art filter, just uh, architecture shots. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to go back. This is not dramatic art filter. This one uh, I have in my notes is actually uh, number two. Number two. Number two uh, on the on the color, uh, you know, on the color profile. So you can see it waited for, of course, the people mover to come around. And this is off top of what we call the Z garage, and just the uh, you know the Shepherd Ferry mural that's painted up extremely high in that area a huge mur- mural coming off so a lot a lot of fun there and um, we'll go through and see if I can find one other one that might stick out to everyone um, these were some of the ones uh, here go into the this this actually shot with the nine millimeter fisheye in in what we all know today as the art filters uh, so very cool. Know, that's a, just an, an art filter one there. Um, again, with the with the stuff you can do with this camera, um, there's so many choices. Oh wait, we can't make any video without showing live composite. Oh yeah, yeah I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, so here, let's talk live composite real quickly. Guess what? Now I've got like ten more controls in live composite. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've got color profiles in live composite. Now I'm really out of control. Yeah, with no it. kidding. So now I can really do some stuff. So again, in Chicago, uh, got a person standing there being a, a great, uh, you know, we're being very patient with me while I shoot for two minutes, waiting for a nice bus to come by uh, to, to fill up the shot. This actually was shot with number three, color profile number three, so that vivid saturation, that's what I wanted. You can tell down in the little bit of Walgreens yep. uh, store there. Uh, down in the corner but uh, you know and of course she had to stand still because I had to hit some light painting on her during the time but you just the, this color zero I'm mean, zero post processing yeah straight camera this is it it's what I saw in the back because again we don't have raw raw the raw profile yet even to go into that right but 20 megapixel just uh, very happy now because now you can take if you've got some bright lights and different kind of gradients in your live composites, you can make up for some of that. I always think of Times Square when we were there. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. What you could do is some crazy stuff because it's so bright and everywhere. So yeah, that's just that's just one more I think I wanted to wanted to share with you. I know you wanted to, you like this one. We'll talk about that. That one sharp here. This one also was the two. Yeah, the, very the, the bean. rich, vibrant yeah, colors. It's rich, just... vibrant colors and the sun coming up underneath the bean. And at 6 in the morning, the only other people there, you can tell, I don't know who that is, but that's a photographer. Yeah, he's got a camera <laughs> strap hanging there. Yeah, he had see. a camera strap, but he had something set up here. He had, like, uh, all kinds of ND filters. And yeah. Yeah, this guy was uh, primed, ready to roll for the morning. <laughs> so, yeah, cool. there you go. So that is some shots that we will uh, have shared cool. with you. All right. All right. Back. So I guess that kind of wraps it up for the uh, the new Pen F mm-hmm. little intro video. Of course, there are a lot of things we don't really know about it yet because it right. is 
still a sample version that you've got? Sample version, no spec sheet. I mean, you know, I've gone over some of the stuff with the people and the engineers that have designed it, but there's no, no written hard spec sheet, written spec sheet right, yet, that yep. we're going to control yet. So, you know, like we said in the beginning, you know, some things are subject to change mm-hmm. without notice, I guess. Um, but for the most part, I think we're pretty confident that this is probably what you're going to see as a, a finished product. I guess if there were any changes, we'd probably see software changes would be right. the biggest thing. But um, so far, I mean, from talking with you over the last month mm-hmm. or so, it sounds like it's pretty solidly built software-wise, yeah. too. I mean, no no funky issues with, that you might expect from a uh, pre-release version. version yeah, pre-release you know? version. And, and we both, you know, especially you've tested them. I know I've tested a couple pre-release versions that... Um, even the air when yeah. we tested the air, oh, yeah. that, that pre-release version was a little t- real little rough. Right, exactly. Um, but uh, obviously, the it works great now. But yeah, this one, uh, this one's a ready to go model. Yeah. So um, I guess with that, we'll kind of close it out. Yeah. You can expect to uh, go over to the Mirrorless Minutes website, and there will be a complete gallery full of uh, product shots again of what is a pre-release version, unless. Before this video launches, we all get our hands on final mm-hmm. products, yep. <laughs> which would be exciting. I know I wouldn't complain, even though this seems to be uh, marketed and geared towards a street photographer. Um, I personally, with the, uh, let me get this right here, the color profile controls right. and the mono profile controls, I could see myself using it for landscape and architecture as well. So Yeah, I mean, as I'm shooting, I'm actually thinking, man, Jamie would like this, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, for that. And for like the, you said, too, you know, it's a 20 megapixel sensor, brand mm-hmm. new for Olympus. Um, so when we get to the, the super high res modes, right. you know, 50, now we're at like 50, over 50 megapixel 50, JPEG. JPEG. So the raw megapixel. file is going to end up being like significantly larger, probably right. close to 65, 70, somewhere yeah. around there. Right. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. Uh Thanks for swinging in and yeah. putting this together, Mike. This is cool. Uh, this is great. A lot of fun to be in Ann Arbor on a freezing morning. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, trying to get in a little street shooting and right. put together this video for you guys. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you like it, thumbs up. Yeah, definitely got to give a thumbs up. You know, share it. Let's let's talk. Uh, hit us with questions. You know, hit me with questions. And if you're into street photography, you're going to be in love. And if yeah. you're not in street photography, I'd still be all over this thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Just because of the stuff it can do. You know, and again, so. picking it up, the build quality is going to be something that's going to right. be a, a big question for a lot of people once they get their hands on it. So, all right, all right sounds cool. good, man. Right. See you guys later. See ya. Bye. So, you got a call?